mistake, if you've forgotten that already. Um, uh, I, I had a, uh, I did start off with something prepared for this, um, but then it's like, sort of looking at the mixed table, I think I'll just abandon that and uh, do, do it on the fly. Um, basic subject is about, uh, about nitrous and nitrous plugins. Um, now, for anyone that doesn't know, um, I mean, I've been able to be familiar with Audacity. But built into Audacity, there's, uh, there's a, another computer language uh, um, which is called Nyquist. Um, the place that is most often seen is if we look on the effects menu here, uh, we've got um, plugins, we've got some uh, extra effects down at the bottom. Unfortunately, because we've got a few problems with this green display, it's falling off the end of the but down here, it's like the, uh, these are effects which aren't built into uh, Audacity itself. There are plug-in effects. Um, we also have um, in this uh, what's called Nyquist prompt, which is an uh, empty box. Um, this is a special effect which is built in, uh, which uh, acts as an interface between the Nyquist language <coughs> and the Audacity. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, Nyquist has been around for a good few years now, which is thanks to um, uh, Roger here, who wrote it, at, uh, um, and then uh, it exists as a standalone programming language. Um, and one of the nice things about it, for where users are concerned, is that um, unlike C and C++, which, um, you know, where you have to write complicated code and then compile that into a, into a, a special kind of file which can then run, um, Nyquist code is in plain text, just simply um, text which then gets interpreted by the Nyquist language uh, to do whatever it does. So, um, probably easy to um, jump straight in and like, give, give some simple examples. So, I can just get rid of this. So, for example, if we just select a bit of a track there, bring up the Nyquist prompt. Yeah, then um, we can just enter uh, a, a, uh, a Nyquist command. So in this case, sure, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. Right, and uh, it also it's um, ho uh, um, thankfully got a debug button here, which will tell us if we do anything wrong. Right, error in this place right now, okay. But it's in it anyway. Is that my eyes? Is that a bit blurred there? Can you just tell us what you typed yeah. there, So what I've typed here right, is OSC 61. Now what that's, what that's going to need to do, the OSC is, uh, is a command which is, uh, um, uh, which is an oscillator. Uh, 60 is the MIDI note that it's going to um, oscillate at. And 1 is the duration. Uh, in this case, it's the duration uh, that is selected. So um, when I click on OK and then if I zoom in from that, we'll see that we've got a nice sine waveform. Yeah. So the simplest way of, of entering commands uh, um, is using the Nyquist prompt. And um, you can do various other things with it. Um, <coughs> so um, just to give another example, well, Right, so what I'm doing here, right, uh, mult, which means multiply, S uh, is our sound, right? uh, S is a special character that's, that's used in Nyquist in Audacity for transferring the sound from the track into Nyquist, yeah? uh, 0.5 to 0.5. So what I'm doing is multiplying the, the sound by 0.5, right? um, and we'll see what this does. Um, and it's made it smaller. Now what that's actually done if we zoom in really close here, we see you've got the individual samples, the, the audio samples. Uh, and what, <coughs> it, what it's done is, is it, um, it's um, multiplied each of those values by the amount we set, which was 0.5. So, for example, we can do the opposite, and if we go effect Nyquist prompt, it's a bit annoying. Right, so if we, um, if we change that to, from 0.5 to 2, Yeah, 
and it's going to make it make bigger. And if you do that to the whole waveform, so just uh, control R to repeat the effect, yeah, you see it's come back to our original one, uh, our original size. <coughs> now, um, and that's akin to just increasing and decreasing the volume of that particular sample, correct? It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, it's the, the amplitude, so, so in effect, um, I mean, if we, if we play that, we should, should get some sound here. Yeah, nice and loud there. Right. And then if we um, use our microsquad <coughs> and multiply that by 0.5, make the waste, waste form get smaller. So, so uh, as I said, that's, that's the simplest way of, of entering uh, uh, Nyquist commands is using the Nyquist prompt. Um, now, you mentioned the manual, so let's have a look there. So we've got um, we've got a table of contents. Uh, uh, this is available online. Uh, I've actually downloaded it here because I wasn't sure whether the um, you know, how easy it would be to connect the internet. Um, and then you've also got an index which gives you all all, all the commands. Yeah, so uh, if we look down, uh, so we've got. Um, is this a audacity specific order? Alexander do one as well? This, um, long time ago. Uh, this, is, this is a manual for Nyquist, right? Okay. So, so the, um, uh, this will work with standalone Nyquist as well. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, there are a few bits in here which don't apply to uh, audacity, but on the whole it's... Um, yeah. So here we've got like, malt, which is what we have to look at. Yeah. And it tells you here the syntax, which is um, uh, malt something, why something else. Um, and you can use... Uh, you can use Malt, um, to multiply, it can be numbers, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, or sounds, or multiple, uh, multi channel sounds. Um, now, in order to run any effect, yeah, you see they're all grayed out here. In order to run any effect, we need to have a track. So, we have a track. Um, now, we've got the um, Got the, the, the classic first program, which, which I should have done first. Print hello world. Is that okay? Hello world. There we go. Um, so it, uh, it can handle text, it, <coughs> as, as in that case, or it can have. Um, we can put small. I haven't got this on this screen here, so I, I can't really see what I'm doing here. <coughs> so, uh, any guesses of what's going to happen if I click OK? Uh, 50. 50. OK, there we go. 
uh, Michael's return of value 15. So it can, uh, can handle numbers right, and sounds right, and text. Text can get a bit, uh, can get a bit tricky because it's, uh, Nitus is specifically designed for handling audio um, uh, and or audio related things. So, what would you say is the main use of Nitus compared to using the GUI normally? Well, um, that was a, uh, the next thing I was wanting to look at is, is like sort of some of the range of what you can do with um, with Nitus. Um, now that I've Got a, uh, I've got a few little demonstrations right, of um, some things which um, uh, you know, the, the Nyquist process is really for a quickie. It's for a quickie, yes. You know, it, it's, it's just to, to do something real quick while else kind of thing. But, but something something really quick that's not already built into the... It's like if you didn't not, if you didn't not you just, you just use yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Now this, this, is a, this is a very common problem we get. Here, here we've got a short, short extract of, of some music which is um, fairly bad quality, as you'll hear. Right. So I'm not going to bother about the crackles at the moment, but the first thing you noticed there right, was the hum. Yeah? And in fact, this is quite interesting because it's like if you look at the analyse, Flex spectrum. Uh, I want to come on the other screen. I'm checking that it's back <laughs> over. There we go. So it's showing it for frequencies. <coughs> and what we'll notice here is what we've got some big spikes here, right? And we've got a, uh, we've got a spike there at um, 60 hertz, one at 120 hertz, uh, one at 180, and one at 300 hertz. Um, now, uh, I mean, we, we can tell from this that the, 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 the recording was probably made in, in America, yeah, as opposed to Europe, because uh, um, in, in England, um, our mains works at 50 hertz, and if we had a home like that in, in England, we'd expect the frequencies to be multiples of 50, multiples of 60, so, oh, right, it's uh, recorded in America. But apart from that, what we want to do is we want to get rid of that. Yeah? Um, now, what, one way you can do that, assuming I've got it sipped in here, right, but oh, it's gone off the bottom now. Right, so what we can use do is we can use a, a notch filter. Yeah, so if we um, uh, so we put it at, at uh, 60 hertz there, um, and then if we just make it make the notch a bit narrower, and now if we look at the analyzed rock spectrum, we will see that first. I'll undo that. Yeah, you'll see that first. That first notch has been severely reduced. <laughs> um, I've probably got the notch a little bit too narrow there. Um, and that's 
filter is written in Nyquist. And that filter is written in Nyquist. And um, what I can do is I can actually show you. Um, Similar thing in our Microsoft prompt. See there that it's done the same thing of reducing that to a spine. Now, um, in here, we might, ideally, um, we want to get rid of all those uh, hung spikes. So, um, so, what we want to do is we want to notch out the 60 hertz, the 120 hertz, the 180 hertz, and 300 hertz. Um, now, with filters like this, we can, uh, we can actually cascade them. Yeah, so, um, so that was doing a 60 hertz <coughs> notch. Let's just make that a little bit wider. <coughs> right, so, 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 uh, So here I've got the, the simple notch filter, which is um, uh, notching at, si at 60 hertz. Um, and then I've wrapped that inside another notch filter, which is uh, notching at 120 hertz. And then I can wrap that inside another notch filter. It's 180 hertz. And what was the other frequency? 300 hertz, wasn't it? Click on OK. And then if we um, put that, and we see there that it's substantially reduced all of those. Right. Now I only applied to the very beginning back. Uh, bit there, so let's undo that. We'll go out like the whole thing. So, micro prompt, and that's our cascaded filters. And we'll see how that sounds. substantial improvement to, to our sound, uh, quite simply there. Now the reason that we might want to do it in the, um, uh, using the Nyquist prompt rather than, um, is because here we were wanting to get rid of um, four different frequency bands. Now as I said, it's not, you know, main term, if it's a, in America it's going to be uh, 60 hertz because that's what, they, you know, that's what they use for their main frequency. Uh, if it's in the UK it's going to be 50 hertz. But um, if it's an old recording, yeah, it might have been transferred off tape, from it, which might have been running a little bit fast. So the frequency might have been slightly off, um, and it might have, uh, you know, it might have been uh, hum at 62 hertz, uh, 120, 124 hertz, and so on. Um, uh, and we noticed that 
um, also, <coughs> like the, um, the 60 hertz is, is your main is your main problem, right? And then these are harmonics of that. Um, now, you, there's no way of telling in our balance right, where exactly those harmonics are going to be. Then they're going to be exact multiples of that fundamental hum. But you don't know how many there's going to be. Sometimes you can go right up into the high range. Yeah. Um, so you're not, you know, it's unlikely that you're going to get a filter that does exactly 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 180 hertz, 300 hertz. You might get one that does like all the other harmonics, or you might get one that, that just does the 60 hertz. Uh, I think that, um, uh, I think at one time um, David Sky did a uh, hum filter that did, you could select between 50 hertz and 60 hertz, so that was a, a specific case. The advantage of, of uh, writing it in the code is that you can customise it to suit your particular use. So here it's like I wanted exactly those frequencies, and because I'm coding it yourself, yeah, I can, I can put in exactly what frequencies I want. Yeah, and I can also set like, how, how wide the other is, the last figure there, the two, the four, the four, and the eight. Uh, I that, 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 why do you make it wider? What's the reason you make the last one? Well, the, the eight is actually narrower. Okay. Yeah, the, the larger that number is, that, that, that's, that's what's called the Q factor of, of, of a filter. Um, and the, 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 the higher the Q factor, the narrower the notch is. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we saw there that. Yeah, it's like it's notching out part of that bit there. Now we could make that uh, a wider notch if we wanted, um, which was that. That's the inner one. That's the 60 hertz one. So we could make that a, a one. And we see there it's going to drop it down. In fact, it drops a bit from before and after it as well. Yeah, so that's probably notching out a bit, a bit too much of a sound, and that uh, will probably affect, well, maybe not so much on this audio example, but if you've got, uh, if you've got some sound which has got a lot of bass in it, you probably notice that your bass is putting off, you know, because you've used a broad notch. I, I, you know, I think that uh, the width of that thing around 60, that might actually be a, a musical tone. That might be the vibrato from the cello or something uh, that's making it wide. I think, I think the, now the bit we've got there is just before the music starts. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, it seems very odd to me that, <coughs> that there would be any bandwidth. I mean, yeah. that should be a very stable 60 or so. But anyway, that's yeah. for a later discussion. Yeah, I mean, you're just enough to a bit of extra there. I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a <coughs> size that, yeah, you can see that like, the, the, that's, the, that's the very narrow 60. Uh, 60 hertz, yeah. and there is other stuff around it, yeah. which is some other noise from somewhere. From, yeah. Yeah. Um, but as I said, the point about this is that you can customise it to, to suit exactly how you want it. Um, now, I mean, another example uh, is, is, um, uh, with, is with fade outs. Yeah. I mean, we've got a um, we've got a fade out effect here. Right. In fact, that's um, Let's just get rid of that hum first. Let's make that a bit bigger. Right, so at the moment, uh, this is a bit abrupt, I think. So you know, if we were wanting to end the piece of music, we'd probably want to fade it out rather than having. So that's our normal fade out. Which works quite nicely. Um, now, now I was, I was finding that um, uh, one of the things, that, um, uh, another thing I do is uh, I, I do sounds like for, for live sound, um, uh, uh, operating the um, the PA system for, for balance and things. Um, and I do find that if I'm fading something out, um, I don't tend to do it exactly smoothly. You know? um, I tend to, uh, it's difficult to describe, right? but I tend to, I start off quite slowly and then, <coughs> then speed it up and then slow it down a bit as I get to the end, which gives a slightly different type of fade out, um, which I think just sounds a little bit, you know, I find that the, that, that the 
what's called the linear fade out. Um, it's, this is easier to see if we, if we do it with a tone. So if I generate a tone there, yeah, uh, and then apply fade out, yeah, you see that it's, it's a very mechanical kind of fade effect. Yeah, and then if we do that back with the music, yeah, yeah, you can hear it's quite, quite a mechanical. <laughs> So in right, in here, right, I've got um, just down off the bottom of the screen. Right, there's an effect uh, that's got, uh, called Studio Fade Out, yeah, um, and it's it's a similar idea to the Fade Out, but it does it slightly differently. Uh, now, so I've just done it off screen there, so I can do it, repeat it. Yeah. And you see that it's like done the Fade Out, but it slight, sounds slightly different. <laughs> So this is the actual code for it. Um, and I say again, it's like we've got, uh, we've got this top bit here which tells Audacity that it's a, um, uh, that, that tells it it's an Iris uh, plugin. Um, and then this is uh, just a little bit of code here, which is uh, what, what does it. And here we've got like that bit of code there, that, that's what's creating, that's like our oscillator, like this is creating our curve. But it's like, um, uh, so, I'll look from this. Yeah, so there, it's like you see down here, we've got uh, uh, that OSC command again, that's the oscillator. And then we've got a bit here which tells it how, you know, what frequency to do it, how long to do it for, right, and uh, what the starting phase is. Um, so, so it's just a, slight, it's a little bit more complicated than that first, very first example that I showed like for, um, <coughs> uh, for, uh, for creating a waveform. And then at the bottom here, we've got, again, we've got the mult, uh, multiply, filter, which is um, what we've created up here using our oscillator. Um, uh, oh no, no, I'm telling you wrong there. Uh, 
this is a, this is an extra little bit of filtering bit. This is the extra bit I said that, that this effect does. I right, so ignore that at the moment. Um, <coughs> it's multiplying. That's that's our sound, which is actually which we've actually filtered in here, in here by the cosine of value. Um, now that could, that could all be entered into the Nyquist problem. extra tool here, which is, uh, this is created as a module, it's appear on the other screen, which is the uh, Nikus uh, Workbench. Um, now, th this is quite handy in that um, it's, it's like an advanced version of the Nikus prompt. Uh, now, it's advanced because we've been, um, we're not restricted to just, use, uh, just using it as effect, you can use it uh, as generator as well. Um, so, uh, Tell it that we want to use uh, a, genera a generator type plugin, and then let's go back to that to original. Oops. generated three and a half seconds right, of that tone. Yeah. Um, we can also do other things with it. Uh, in fact, uh, I mean, Nyquist has got tremendous capabilities for, for synthesizing sounds. Um, so it's like
So they what I've done, right, is I've created, um, uh, with this com uh, command PWLB, I've created a, a kind of envelope shape uh, with, uh, various with various points. So like at 0, at 0, 0 uh, it starts at 0, 0, then at 0 0.1 it goes up to a, an amplitude of 1, then at 0 0.2 it goes down to an amplitude of, whatever I've got there, 0 0.2, and then at 1 it goes back down to 0. So here I've created an envelope and then multiplied that by the oscillator. So it's, it's created an envelope around the cell, around the sound. Make it sound like that. Um, so I mean, uh, I've got some. So uh, uh, here's some, there's some examples within the documentation for different types of, of synthesis. Um, and uh, in fact, I think some of these are actually included in. Right? Yeah, so you've got the, the pluck, which I think is... Um, a risk drum, yeah, so... so in the, in the documentation here, we've got, an, uh, we've got the, uh, the code for the RISIP, uh, the RISIP drum. Um, but, uh, you know, um, just a, a couple of um, little demonstrations. Um, uh, here's here's um, a little plugin I made uh, that's using um, the kind of synthesis called Cochlear Strong <coughs> Synthesis, which I've, I've only recently come across. Um, basically, what it does is it's, uh, it takes a um, short impulse sound uh, and then filters it uh, and um, uh, adds a very short delay. So, so it repeats it through a delay, filtering it each time. Right? And, it create, uh, and it, it creates a kind of percussive kind of sound. So it's, a, it's a very simple form of uh, physical modeling. Um, so, and it's good for making like pluck sounds and drum type sounds. Um, so this, um, this plugin I've got, um, using that algorithm to create the sounds, and then I've just simply put in some, some note data here so to make you do something interesting. Right, so just let that run. What we're waiting to do, what's the difference in, in timing between sort of a native effect and, and something that happens in night Is it much slower or is it? Well, well it's, um, people think it's bound to be slower because it's an interpreted, la an interpreted language. But it's not always, I'll, I'll show you a, an example uh, shortly. Uh, so anyway, this is the copper strong signal. <laughs> Synthesis. I don't know if anybody's into synthesized music, but uh, Yamaha sort of made FM synthesis very fashionable back in the 70s, 80s, uh, with the DX synthesizers, uh, which have a particular kind of sound to them. So, so here's a, just a short example. Um, <laughs> say about speed is, is I've, I've done some examples of implementing uh, sound synthesis code in C and in Nyquist and the, the Nyquist overhead's about 3%. Yeah. So that's if, I mean there, there are a lot of caveats there. You can certainly write stuff that runs 
on slower and nightly speed. Okay, so try. Yeah. But, but generally, the, uh, the Nyquist stuff is so optimized that I, I would say Nyquist is generally faster than C code. Right. Well, I mean, the example I was going to give here was with um, gen, uh, generation tones, right? So, uh, as well as a sine sine tone, right, we can also generate a, a square tone, right? And uh, that's going to run very nicely. And, um, Square tone. Now, if we look at that, there's our square tone. Yeah. Now, these type of square tones, right? Um, uh, I don't know if you can be able to see it. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Now, what we should what we should have um, is a is a series of um, spikes here, starting at. Um, Right, so, so that's, uh, that's our fundamental frequency, what was that, 440 I think, um, 440. So here we've got the main spike at 440. Um, right, and then we've got the various harmonics that make up the, make up the square wave. You notice all this stuff down at the bottom here, right, that's not supposed to be there. Right? Um, that's um, that's um, caused by an aliasing distortion, it's because um, uh, this waveform is actually creating frequencies which are too high for the simple sample rate, and so they're bouncing back down and, and creating a lot of noise. Now, what well, that's has built in a better quality square wave, which avoids that, that noise. Um, in effect, it's kind of rounding the corners here. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but if we, if we just try that, um, and we select the square no alias, You see, this is getting a bit slower to do this. Right. And if we look, you just see that the corners are a little bit rounded. And if you look at the spectrum, you see we've got a much cleaner plot there yeah, uh, showing our frequencies. Yeah. And so, so, th so that, that's a, a, what we call an alias free square, uh, square wave. Now, notice that that took a little bit, a bit longer to, to produce. Now, if we try to do lower frequency, so let's try and say 50 hertz. This isn't a very fast machine, but um, it'll demonstrate the point. I guess it is working on that. There we go. <coughs> so this is the built-in effect, which is programmed in, in uh, the sequence course. Yeah, um, and then if we so, yeah, and now we can see our frequencies. If we put this on a mini scale, not a mini. Yeah, you can see how the um, the frequencies stop at that point, and they don't they don't carry on to, um, beyond the. Yeah. And so, so it's what's called band limited. Yeah, um, but then we've got a nice clean waveform, but it was dead slow to produce. Yeah. Now I've written um, a Nyquist version. So let's uh, put it here. Why haven't you put it there? Hang on a second. Let me see if we find it. Create it as a version plug, four plugin, which isn't uh, <laughs> there yet. So, you know, high quality tone. 
But this is written in, in uh, this is written in uh, Nyquist, um, and this is written as a, as a version four plugin, which doesn't exist yet, but uh, it's something that they has been played with. Um, so uh, what we wanted, we wanted a frequency of 50 hertz, duration 30 seconds, and we wanted a, 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 a nice uh, square wave. So click on OK. You can see how fast that was. Yeah. And then again, if we look at the spectrum of it, yeah, we'll see that, see that again in time we've got a nice clean spectrum without that extra noise. Yeah. Compare that with the um, floating one, so uh, the square no radius, 50 hertz. So just because it's uh, written in Nyquist doesn't mean that it's going to be a lot slower. Yeah. yeah, this being the uh, built-in C++ effect. <coughs> and this being in Nyquist. Okay. Um, which is not to being massively faster than C++, which it isn't, um, is actually just uh, um, it, uh, the, this Nyquist version is coded slightly differently. Um, one of the things that you can, uh, with, uh, with the built-in effect, um, is basically using the same code, code for the tone and for the chirp, which allows you to have a start frequency and an end frequency. Yeah, um, so it's having to calculate every uh, cycle of that square wave as it goes along. Whereas the Nyquist version um, isn't written for doing sweeping tones, it's uh, written for doing uh, constant tones. So again, in this time, we have a situation here where uh, if, you're, uh, if you're writing in Nyquist, because it's like quick, quick to write, um, and you, you can tailor it for the job you have in hand. So for the job in hand here is just to make a constant tone, um, uh, so it can then be optimised for doing that job. And you see there, it's like, if you're wanting to produce a lot of square waves with you know, alias free square waves, it could take an awful long time using the built-in effect. <laughs> using a, using a, you know, a Nyquist plugin, which has been designed specifically for, for that job, or has been tweaked or tailored to do that job if, if, uh, efficiently, it can save you an awful lot of time. Um, so things that, um, things that you can do with Nyquist, uh, there's a, um, the range is, is really tremendous. Um, I've lost my pointer. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, um, an, an example that came up on the forum recently was that um, somebody they got a video. Um, and they, um, uh, it, it got titled at the beginning, uh, and then something else happened, and they got a piece of music to go with the titles at the beginning, and uh, and then it was going to go into the uh, into the main video. But the music they got was was too long for the title, so they wanted to trim it down in some way. Anyway, uh, this got me playing with with, uh, with this, this inner thing, looking at how to go from you know, where you have the timings that you have to meet, and then uh, so you know, fitting your music to particular timings. And I, I just made like this, uh, this, this is just like a simple little audio example, where I've got a piece of music, and then using a, using a Nyquist effect, in fact I used the, the um, studio fade out, or photo fade out, whatever you call it in the end, um, to, make, to fade out the bit of music at the beginning. And then I, uh, and then I faded in, a synthesized sound which was synthesized in Nyquist, right, and then brought in like this, this um, uh, um, some spoken word, which is like the contents of the. <coughs> so I'll just give, show show that as, a, as an example. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's up to the 
global apocalypse. The phage, the zombie virus that brought the world to its knees, has mutated, restoring the minds of its undead victims. Their personalities, their memories, even their dreams. The hungry dead are no longer the mindless monsters that drove mankind to the brink of extinction. Oh, I'm really rest of it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so, so, um, I mean, there I could have spent a lot of time. Um, uh, you notice that, that kind of windy, droney sort of sound that the music gave it. Is. It is ten years after the yeah. uh, Now there is, I knew what sort of sound I wanted. I, I wanted to it sounded like wind, I wanted a low, like a drone effect. And um, so I could spend a lot, lot of time looking online or uh, playing with synthesizers to try and find that particular sound. Um, <coughs> I thought, well, I know what sort of sound it wants to be, so how would I make it? Yeah, um, I thought, well, uh, um, it's, it's like noise-based, yeah, and something that, uh, that, uh, that, I, that, I'm, uh, that I know because of that work sound a lot is that if you um, pass noise through, through a narrow filter, it gives you this uh, um, sound which is like, the, the narrower the filter is, the more tone-like it becomes. And because white no if you're using white noise, which is random, uh, it's not at a constant level, it, it, it tends to fluctuate. Um, so it's a uh, <coughs> thing back here. Um, so like if I generate some, some noise, right, so some white noise, so it's that will do. And then using the Nyquist prompt, I can create a, a narrow filter. Um, several times and so each time it's now it's, it's filtering it a bit narrower. Using the sound that's uh, that's on the track there, we can actually. Um, Microsoft got some built-in noise effect, so um, the command for that is just noise, which is. So to make it a bit more complex, yeah. What I thought is uh, I can just add in. Several, several different noises, yeah, total noises, but at slightly different frequencies. So I put that at 160. <coughs> and this one we could put at um, uh, 230. But we want uh, these all to, all, to, um, all to combine so that so we can all play at the same time. So. What I'll do is I'll just add them together, like the sum, line them together. 
people not standing. And that's the kind of sound I want it. So, very simply, you know, from having an idea about the sound, and um, uh, rather than searching the internet to see if we find something like it, you know, using an eyepiece, you can actually you can just go, well, okay, I'll make it yourself. Yeah, um, and, uh, and that is, in the you notice, know, a playback max audio sample. Obviously, it's a bit lower frequency. A bit lower there, so it's what we use. It's the same sound. It is ten years after the global apocalypse. The fate. So, on. so, so um, again, it's like you know, a custom job. Something which you, you know, you're not going to get that as an off-the-shelf. Effects, you know, so, but uh, the versatility of, of knife is allows you to make something, to tailor make it, yeah, to, to, to what you need. Um, and so, uh, and that was just another example of a bit of synthesis. Um, just to finish off here, um, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd give a couple of uh, other quick examples of um, so, uh, some music which, which I've um, created using knife Um uh, this, uh, this first piece is um, yeah, it's called Metal Fish, yeah, um, which I'll, I'll just I'll just play it. Wouldn't they just sing? Well, it's actually a pun uh, because it's based on the croissant distribution. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, when I said that, it was <coughs> made in Nyquist. The, the only thing that wasn't done in Nyquist there was that um, uh, um, there were separate sections which were mixed in all that tape. So all the sounds in that were generated using Nyquist, and uh, the, the notes were selected by Nyquist you know, from, the, from the algorithms. How long did that take? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I was at least track. But uh, yeah, I mean, and, uh, I mean, for something completely different, um, here's a, just a short contrast. Yeah, but most of it. using Nyquist 
because it's a, um, it's a very powerful, very versatile language. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's particularly good, it's very good for prototyping, you know, if you've got an idea of, of something you want to develop, um, rather than having to like, you know, code it all up in, in C++, which you know, could take quite a lot of time. And then it's like you might have coded it, and then think, oh, I wish I'd done it like that. And then you think, oh, I've got to redo all that to do that. If you're using Microsoft, it's like you can very, you know, you can, you, you know, code up the basic, uh, you know, a lot of effects and a lot of generators. You can get the, you know, basic fun functionality there within minutes. Um, so it can work as a very fast prototyping environment. Um, also, brilliant for like those one-off jobs, you know, where. You know, you can't, you can't find the exact effect. Um, another common use that we get on the forum is where somebody, say, you know, somebody writes in and, say, and says, I, I, want to, um, I want to add a fade in out at the end of my audio tracks. Yeah, oh, oh, a little fade in, a uh, five second fade in, five second fade out. You go, well, that's easy, just like import the track, fade it in, fade it out. So yeah, but I've got 3,000 of these tracks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hmm. Okay, right. Um, just write it as a plugin, right? Uh, and then, you know, uh, Nitro plugins are supported by the chains function. So you can create a chain where it imports your, imports your file, applies to the fade in, fade out, export it again, repeat, time, you know, 3,000 times, yeah, go out, support, right, it's been useful while you, well, while you leave your computer to do the work. So lots of uses for it. Some limitations, are, uh, uh, um, which are like mostly an interface limitation, um, limitations beyond that are largely to do with uh, imagination. So that's really my presentation on my quiz. Thanks very much.